You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's The Real Housewives of Orange County After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post game wrap up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's The Real Housewives of Orange County After Show. I oh, wish yeah. they were throwing elbows. I know. We need a little more Real Housewives of Atlanta in this show. We do. <laughs> oh. Hello, Real Housewives fans, and welcome to The Real Housewives of Orange County After Show, Season 9, Episode 8, Not So Silent Night. I'm your host, Grant Rudder. Thank you for checking us out. And with me tonight... Hi, everyone. I'm Sterling Cates. Happy to be here. There's lots to discuss when it comes tonight. Everything from uh, Christmas decorations to Good Day LA to workouts. Yeah. Uh, so... And finally, this Christmas party that Shannon has been planning for the past 18 episodes. <laughs> yes, she spent three episodes decorating her house. Yeah. And then she went around taking decorations down. Right. Yeah, so I, I, be perfect. Yeah, but I, I can relate to her. But before we get into all of that, and before we get into especially everything with the, these workout different types of places in Orange County's <laughs> fitness studios. Let's talk about this book. Maria Menounos' new book, The Every Girl's Guide to Diet and Fitness, which is that you can buy on Amazon and Borders and anywhere where books are sold. And um, it's a great book to pick up right now because, you know, we're coming up on Time the summer. I mean, it's, baddies, it's like, yeah. I mean, really, uh, we, we, how long? I mean, it depends where you live in the country, but I mean, people are on the beach here already, oh, and then yeah. it's through summer, September. Summer so has begun. Yes. What I like about this book is there's lots of recipes, lots of um, interviews with different celebrities, pictures, that sort of stuff. And it's really not like a crash diet. It's all about just sit, living an active lifestyle mm -hmm. and kind of being consistent with that as opposed to just all of those crash fads that we hear about these right. days. Right. And I love her abs on the cover. She oh, looks my gosh. Great, she so. looks amazing. <laughs> I can't even believe she was ever 40 pounds heavier. Right. So check yeah. it out, After Buzzers. Check it out. Do it. Okay. <laughs> yes. So before we get to this party that we are going to be discussing the majority of the episode about, Tamara went to the doctor's office with her son, Ryan. Everything with Tamara is going well since she is taking these uh, testosterone supplements. But Ryan doesn't really have the best news. Apparently, he is has very high cholesterol and... The way he's been trying to build his body, which is it's, it must be frustrating because you're trying to eat. Obviously, he's taking the HGH, things that aren't healthy for your body, but he's trying to get big. He's trying to get fit. Right. But at the same time, like he's damaging his body by taking these things to get a healthy body. Like yeah. it's, it's just so counterproductive. Exactly. And we talked a little bit about last week about how he is having a hard time gaining muscle and because he's kind of on the scrawnier side mm -hmm. naturally. And, um, but his results showed that his HDL, which is his good fat, is too low, and his LDL is way too high, and that can be caused by the um, growth hormones, but then the iron is really high, and that's not affected by the growth hormones that he's taking, so that could just be a genetic problem that right. he's having, but they can't tell because he has so much stuff going on in his body right now with all the supplements, so they right. need, he needs to clear detox, out, yeah. detox, and then get yeah. tested again. Otherwise, he's not yeah. going to know. I mean, it's really frustrating. It's all science. And right. I, I'm in a similar situation where I'm trying to put on some weight. And I've kind of got to the place now where I've accepted that I really can't fight genetics. And mm. just my lifestyle doesn't really allow me to eat the amount of like 2,000 plus calories, almost 3,000 calories a day I should be eating in order to see the correct gains. And that's not even taking into account with any type of supplements. Right. And this guy has been really focused on this. And he still can't even get it right. I know. So, yeah, and he has a, you know, a lot. He needs to put his health first before how he looks. Right. And, you know, for a guy, I feel, I don't know, I feel like that wouldn't be that big of a decision when it comes. Because especially his grandfather had a heart attack at the age of 50, and his doctor's telling him he could very well have a heart attack by the age of 40. So that's just terrifying, you know? So now, hopefully he'll 
get his act together. Tamara's mentioned a few times now that he's 28. There's really nothing she can really do except like present him the facts and really kind of push him in the right direction. Mm -hmm. But do you feel that maybe Tamara's not really as upset as a mother would be with this situation? Um, I definitely think she's worried. I think she's being realistic about not being able to tell him what to do. And I think that she's learned in the past with him that when she tells him not to do something, he's going to do it. And that's kind of how he's had that. We talked about this last week about how he kind of rebels and kind of has a history of yeah. making not the best decisions. So I think her approach with this, with him specifically, I'm not saying this is the best mothering technique for everyone, but to kind of be more of a support system and help him. I think anybody that's going to get through to him is going to be the doctor. It's not going to be her. Right. So by taking him to the doctor and the doctor saying, okay, you need to do this, this, and this, that's kind of hitting home with him more. I feel her reaction should have been a little bit bigger when the mm -hmm. doctor's there saying you could have a heart attack at any moment. Right. Um, he's under 30, and he, she knows basically his whole history. So why isn't she a little bit more... Yeah. I mean, I'm not I saying mean, she's, I'm she not saying she's a bad mother. I'm not saying that. Him? But I'm right. just saying that I feel like she... I feel like my mother would be a lot more irate oh, and definitely. nervous and worried, but my mother probably isn't as chill as Tamara yeah. is. It's well, definitely two different people. Right, and the scene with her and Eddie in the kitchen cooking dinner, she definitely seemed very worried and mm -hmm. very concerned. So I don't know if they added in that scene later because she didn't have a very big reaction Maybe. initially. But regardless, I'm sure she's worried about his health. Yeah. Eddie um, wasn't too worried. He was Eddie paying was like, attention. Oh, okay, well, dinner's ready. Yeah, so... <laughs> He's very calm. Yeah, sure. very calm. I very like calming. Eddie. All right, so let's flash forward to uh, we're in West LA at the Fox Television Center. Where, right by you work. Yeah, right, right across the street from where I work. Mm -hmm. If only I could work on one of those sets. <laughs> um, but so uh, it's over at the set of Good Day LA, which I didn't even know taped over there. Mm -hmm. And um, Good Day LA is a show that takes place all here, but they're, they're all <laughs> in over, LA. They're all over <laughs> the country. I think like, this is like Good Day LA New York and all that. Yeah. So Good Day New York, and uh, this is, this is ours. But uh, we had a Good Day LA play in. Rhode Island where I grew up and I was always like wondering why uh -huh. but no I know and there's that old man on that show who's been there forever yeah. he must have some type of deal with that show yeah I get, I, I've I never watched it personally sorry everyone <laughs> but I just feel like he's been on there for so yeah. long I wonder when they're gonna get some fresh talent I don't in there. Know. <laughs> the, the soup always would just rock that show down. yeah they would just totally goof on it because there'd be people walking through green screens and green dresses it was a mess anyway <laughs> so Tam uh, no, Heather is joining the mess of Good Daily, which I'm sure is Congrats. a great show. But yes, <laughs> so she's been there before, and now um, she's there to discuss Hawaii Five O, which we, we would have know. to hear all about again. Yep, and she had to, <laughs> she had to. The, the director wanted her head to hit the stairs going down. She's not a stunt woman. We know, we know, we know. But I mean. She's there. She's talking about it with that old man. Yeah. And it's, she seems really comfortable there. Uh, she does seem very comfortable in that talk yeah. show setting. I can definitely see her pursuing that and mm -hmm. being good at it. Yeah. What did you think of her discussing her her, her scenes on Hawaii Five-0? Well, I mean, we've heard it every time she talks about yeah. it. So it's kind of like that's her speech that she has prepared that she does every single yeah, time. Yeah. It's about, like that same thing she was saying to them is what we've heard in the confessional. Right. You know. Did you um, set your DVR for that episode back uh, in December? I must have forgotten. Did you miss it? I, mu oh I my missed God. it. Did you see it? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I don't watch that show, but my grandparents yeah, I, do. Maybe yeah. they'll remember Heather Dubrow falling down the <laughs> stairs. I, I don't know. But um, she ended up being asked to kind of stick around. They called her over, like, can we, can we talk to you? Yeah, like we had to talk to him for a minute. We have a little thing to a little just something to discuss. Yeah. And then like that, like that old man really must get. I don't know his name. It's terrible. But the older <laughs> gentleman on Good Day LA, he must really have some type of pull on that show because he was basically yeah. telling her like, look, you know, um, we're gonna have someone on maternity leave, so we're gonna pull you on if you if you're interested. And I, why wouldn't Heather be interested? Right. Well, I, the, what I got from that is that they kind of asked him to ask her because he mm -hmm. saw the producer in the background like. Oh, I missed like, that part. She was in the background just like, yeah, yeah, this is a great idea. Because it's the same girl who um, greeted her when she got there. Oh, so I feel okay. like that was definitely produced, but it's way more official and way more awesome when right. the c other co-host is asking. And he's like the real face of the he's show. Like the I couldn't tell you anybody show. else on that panel. Exactly, yeah. Right, right. So the other co-host, the other host is getting, going on maternity leave, and so Heather is going to fill in. Mm-hmm. 
yep. through some segments and stuff. Heather's getting ready to go to this party now. She's getting ready to go to this Christmas party at Shannon's but first over-decorated I have to house. The wife, I yeah, know. but first, mm -hmm. yeah. So she is. Her and, and Terry had the, this very uh, not so candid conversation about where the sit she, down. Yeah, <laughs> where she stands with Shannon and what they're gonna walk into, and how Shannon was late for their party like two weeks ago. Um, already brings up, and the way the show is is cut is it makes it look like all these people do is talk. The same four people talk about the same four people constantly. Right, and the same things that have happened over and over. Over and over. Yeah. And they're going back to things that weren't even on the show, like, like way back, which we'll get to in a minute with Cut Fitness. So anyway, Shannon's over-decorated house looks great. Her Christmas tree really it's did beautiful. look beautiful. Nice. It was like a storybook. She has no budget house. for this party. Yeah, she which had I no like. idea what she said. I don't know what the budget is. I like that. Yeah. No, I can totally. You're like, that's turn. what I would be. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because she had all this help, and she like she's like, yeah, I mean, if it's a few people, I'll cook. But if I'm not, if it's more than that, she really didn't know what end was up, and that you know. But she loves Christmas and she loves to decorate. Yeah. And everything really did look good. Now that's a party I'd like to go to. I would love to go to that yeah. type of party. She mm -hmm. knows how to throw a good party. Yeah, and she knows except it for too. when they're talking behind about everyone in the kitchen and everyone can hear it yeah that's, <laughs> that's true and her it's a little uncomfortable then her husband's walking around drinking tequila and not being very helpful and she paid five hundred dollars for those heaters that was about it yeah i mean that was really about it right and then tamra's there tamra looked good yeah she looked in the she jumpsuit was, yeah she was wearing a jumpsuit that was very low cut mm. v-neck she was looking real spicy for a for a um, <laughs> Christmas party. I know, at someone's house. Yeah. Was, <laughs> just going over to someone's house. Yeah. Um, so now we've got her and Heather, and Heather calls her over real quick and is like, oh, news for you. Who could it be about? You know, who could it be about? Who Heather, could Heather be obviously. talking about? I was like, if she says the word Hawaii Five O one more time. <laughs> tonight? So I'm on Hawaii Five O tonight. And I was on <laughs> Good Day LA know, this week. If yeah. you didn't already know, I was on Good Day LA. I was on one episode of Hawaii Five O. <laughs> I was promoting it. <laughs> and, um, and they asked me, you know, can I, could I fill in for a girl on uh, maternity leave? And so, of course, like, Heather wants this like parade of joyful congratulations. Yeah. Tamara's just like giving her the biggest side eye ever. Yeah. And we, we learn that apparently Heather's been on the show before and there was a, a rival fitness studio that was featured on the show and Heather claims she had nothing to do with it. They didn't necessarily word booking, but they did say that Heather had like nothing to do with it. She wasn't, I wasn't up to her pretty mm -hmm. much. That's how it was painted. And Heather was real, said, I mean, excuse me, Tamara said it really hurt her like a knife to the heart that her fitness studio, which was just opening, which would have been newsworthy at yeah, the time. Yeah, it would have been perfect timing. Yeah, and I mean, let's be real. If Heather Dubrow is coming on Good Daily at all, there's going to be something said about the Real Housewives of Orange County because mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing she's got going on. Obviously. So if they've got Heather Dubrow from RHOC, why wouldn't they have Cup Fitness and tie it in? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I don't know if it was intentional or not on Heather's part not to have Tamara on the show or to have versus this other studio. But we've seen it time and a time again where Heather is just denying any blame. My hands are clean, you know, and you know they're not. Right. You know, and so it's just hard to believe what she's saying. Especially when Terry took the initiative to text Tamara about how he told her not to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of right, fishy right. there. Something fishy's going on. Right. Well, between <laughs> the two of them, they're just having this conversation, just you know, round one, basically, just mm -hmm. the two of them. Um, and I, I guess Orange Theory Fitness is the gym that Heather works out at, which is also questionable mm -hmm. why she wouldn't go to Tamara's gym. What do you I don't think? know. Maybe that's where she had been going up, leading up to when Tamara's opened. Because mm -hmm. this was right around the time that Tamara was just opening her gym, so maybe this is where Heather had been going in the past. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, if, the I don't know if she's yeah. yeah, that's the nicest thing I'll say about her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Tamara revealed that she has got different trainers at her gym that also train at this Orange Theory gym. Mm -hmm. Sounds like that sounds like like such like a sounds rival like a clothing place. Line. Yeah. Orange Theory. I feel like that mm -hmm. doesn't sound like a gym name. But no, that's just Who an knows? observation. So, yeah, so the trainers basically said that Heather did have something to do with it. She kind of like, they didn't use the word coordinated, but she was involved in it. Right. And, I mean, what's the, what is the coincidence that I'm going to be co-hosting 
the day away and that my gym happens to be there on the right, same day. Exactly. And Tamara this, even said every time she's on that show, Heather has people who she works with true. also on the show, like Fabio the chef and then someone who's her clothier or whatever. I don't even know what that means. But, you know, <laughs> some people that she works with yeah. on the show every time she's on there. So it makes sense that she would be behind it. Right. I don't know why they need to have... I mean, it's not like you've got, like, Angelina Jolie and you want to see what Angelina Jolie's head hairstylist has to say. Right. I, mean, why, I don't understand why they would pull out all these people for, for Heather. Right. I mean, I mean, are you interested in any of her camp? No. Well, I'm also just not really interested in Heather at yeah. all. No, I mean, oh, okay. I mean, maybe that's just the best booking that can happen. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, well, it makes sense. If she's going to be doing a segment with this person, there needs to be some sort of relationship that she's had with them before. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's why she has her her chef on, her something. Right. So they're interacting. Tamara looked visibly bothered by the fact that... Oh, she was very upset. Yeah, this has been sitting with her for a while. Right. Well, before we found out about the whole Cut Fitness versus Orange Theory thing, um, when Heather was just talking about Hawaii Five-0 and how she was on Good Day LA, Tamara still had that look of... I didn't know where it was going, mm -hmm. and I'm glad it went in a different direction than her just being tired of hearing Heather talk about Good Day LA. Because right, yeah. that's what I was thinking in the, when she first started talking. Right. Now, Heather really wanted like uh, this moment of being celebratory because she thought she was like, not only was she announcing her success with Hawaii Five-0 and getting this gig, and then she also was going to give this gift to Tamara to have her promote her show. And it just went so south. It couldn't. It blew up in our face. Oh my gosh! And Eddie deserved. and Terry are just sitting there. <laughs> did, did Heather deserve it though? Well, it's hard to say because we still don't know exactly if Heather was behind it or not. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it was the time or the place to bring it up. Granted, we do want to see this drama unfold, you know, on camera for us to watch. Right. But you know, I mean, if Tamara. I think the thing is, is that now Tamara is getting the opportunity, and I 100% agreed with what Vicky, Vicky said, that this um, opportunity to be on Good Day LA is a gift. It's not something that you just deserve to have, and the fact that she didn't get it the first time doesn't mean, mm -hmm. you know, that's not, she's not entitled to have that. But now she has it, and that's awesome. Like, go do it. Oh, yeah. But also, we don't know Heather's involvement, and if Heather didn't choose her thing her fitness studio, I think that is really messed up on her part. Right. I mean, yeah. I, I can see the other side of it, though, as well. Because, you know, Tamara is promoting this new studio. Yeah. It's a small, she mentioned it, you know, fitness, especially probably in Orange County, the fitness world is very small. And she's launching this studio. It just it doesn't make sense to not have her on, exactly. in my opinion. It really doesn't. Mm. And it would have been ideal timing just because they were just opening and so I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I have a feeling that Heather, you know, didn't choose her studio and that she did have a say-so, but that's just well, me. Yeah, perhaps we'll never know. Yeah. The guys come mm -hmm. in and they're kind of like, okay, everything's good. We're going to celebrate and clinking glasses. And Eddie, then that was kind of it. <laughs> Eddie's like, you guys love each other. I think she's a great friend. And I'm just like, all right, Eddie, <laughs> yeah. calm down. <laughs> but you really like him, though. I He's, like you know, Eddie. I do. Enjoy him. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoy him as a person. He's probably mm -hmm. not the best... Uh, character for a reality TV show just because he is so normal and yeah. avoids drama at all costs. But I think that's why I like him is because yeah. he's the most normal person on the show. Mm -hmm. So that was it for that round one. Yeah. And then all these ladies sit around. <laughs> they just sit around and they're like kind of ignoring. Is this the this is the point where? Oh, by the way, um, before we get to this point, Danielle is at the party. Oh, good. When she walked in, we both said they're just going to show her entrance and then not show her again. But they, they sat to, like, her in that group just so that she could be relevant. Yeah, they needed to just turn her mic pack off because even when it's on, do you see when they were like talking? She was talking and she was kind of in like the, the like the background, and she was trying to be in the conversation, and they lowered her mic <laughs> way down because they didn't even use her audio because it was like going to be too conflicting. It was so unimportant. Yeah, and they kept kind of cutting her off. Yeah, and she brought up one point, which was like. Obvious. Yeah, she, I was like, thank you, Danielle, yeah. for pointing that out. She's like, Tamara's a little angry with Heather right now. Yeah. Like, well, she said, so okay. she chose this studio oh, yeah. over your studio. And yeah. we're like, yeah. yes. That's what we've been talking okay. about for the past you 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. She really is a waste of time. I don't know the woman personally, <laughs> but I don't know why she's on the show. 
I don't know what the point of it is. They, well, it said Tamara's friend. They yeah, put that but, under but last, her name. But last episode, she was Lizzie's friend. And Tamara True, and Lizzie yeah. just met, so I don't know. But the other thing about Danielle, it's kind of going along with what Eddie is. She's too normal, and she's too, mm -hmm. which is a good yeah. thing, and too not really involved in drama and stuff for to be a character on a reality right. TV show. Right. As a person, I'm sure she's a great friend, mm -hmm. <laughs> a great person, yeah. but, you know, know, not her. interesting enough yeah. to watch on... The husband was interesting. Christian? <laughs> Her Lizzie's husband. A, was that? No. The, oh, the, the husband from the Christmas part. From the yeah. ugly sweater Christmas yeah. part. The, the questionable. questionable husband. Yeah, where's he? Why doesn't he come to the party? You'd think he would be there. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm not saying anything either way, but he was a good character. Um, so, so Danielle's boring as hell, and you know who's stepping up <laughs> is um, this this chick, Lizzie. She, Finally. She's kind of like, all right, come on, like. We're going to talk about something here. Yeah. And um, she was really kind of the ringleader. And, of course, Tara was like, just shut the F up. Was it just me, or did she seem really uncomfortable, though, bringing it up in front of everyone? Because, obviously, her point was, okay, the four of us have been sitting here talking about Heather behind her back, and now that Heather's here, are we not going to talk about it? Obviously, that's the mature thing to do is to talk about it because it's, yeah. you know, very high school to not – you know, even address it. But she right. was like, guys, right? Come on, mm -hmm. like, talk. <laughs> so right. she seemed a little bit desperate at the end when they weren't starting to talk. Mm -hmm. She but she took that moment, though, and made it her own. Mm -hmm. Which I'll give her that. Because a new housewife, especially with, you know, you've got someone like, like Vicky yeah. in the room. Like, you know, it's hard to take those, to find those moments. But before Heather came over and, and we got into the second part of this discussion, um, Shannon was talking about how she took Tamara's daughter home after the bull riding incident. Mm -hmm. And so that really seemed to upset Heather to the point because Heather mentioned last week that she felt she was kind of being sidelined. Mm -hmm. She introduced Shannon to the group. The group really liked Shannon, and now Heather feels like she's kind of on the outs of this. And it couldn't have helped any better when Tamara trusted Shannon to take care of her daughter instead of Heather. Right. Well, it was Heather's party. Heather had a lot to deal with that, that during that party, everything's going on. So why wouldn't Tamara let Shannon, you know, without bothering Heather about any of it? But I think Heather was offended that she didn't ask her to take right. the daughter home. I wonder if Heather is really offended by being left out or if she's just using this as to latch on to something to be able to create another plot line. Because I feel like she knows what which I feel like she knows what story producers are looking for. I think that that would definitely be an option. Mm -hmm. The second one. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's a very Heather thing to do. Yeah. Because she made a big deal in the previous week how she wasn't invited to the football game that they had right after Thanksgiving, and she was supposedly on the East Coast, so she couldn't make it. And um, Shannon wrote in her blog last week that. That football game was the same day that Heather and her family were flying back from New York. Mm -hmm. And they could have made it. But Shannon said, if you're flying a six-hour flight with young kids, why would you want to go play a football game a afterwards? Football game. Yeah, Nobody exactly. would want to do that. So it, no, she wasn't really leaving anybody out. She was more like thinking logically. But yeah. of course, Heather is making this more than it is, and which really leads to my whole theory that Heather is really just cut. She's being like a story producer herself, yeah. and she's she is an actress, and I, I think she's being real. Well, we got to see a little bit of her acting, you know, at Where? the end of round two when oh, with they, the phone yeah, call. Yeah. We'll, get, we'll talk about that. In a oh second. yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. That's my, that was my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> we'll so, talk about that in yeah. a second. So now Shannon says, I mean, excuse me, Tamara says that Heather called her up and said, you need to pick a side. Mm -hmm. That was a big moment right there. Mm -hmm. That Those are fighting words right here already. Pick a, a, pick a side. It's difficult. You, Shannon's new to this group, and of course, Heather, as she reminded us, was in Tamara's wedding, so they're right. super close. She said that about five times yeah. this episode. <laughs> She definitely latched onto that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you think yeah. of pick a side? I mean, is that, are those fighting words? I definitely was... think so. And I think that Heather, from the minute Shannon was late to her party a couple of episodes ago, was immediately making people pick sides. Whether she said pick a side word for word or not, she was putting people in the position where they felt they were in the middle. Like Lizzie felt like she was in the middle. 
um, like when they went on the play date and she was like, right. when it's trying to convince everyone that she's right, Shannon's wrong, but you don't have to pick a side. Right. You know, but for her to actually say, okay, pick a side, mm -hmm. that definitely is, I mean, it's just consistent with how she acted. Yeah. No, I, I still stick by the fact that I think that Heather is kind of make, just really playing up to the cameras. And, but what's interesting is a line like that, pick a side, was said off camera. Off camera. So that's definitely something that if you really wanted to rile people up, you'd say it right in front of Shannon. You'd right. be like, oh, you two are still talking? Well, you know what? We need to settle this right now. You right. Know, Tamara, you can't play the middle anywhere. You just pick a side right now. Well, you know, also, we don't know if that was off camera or on camera and it just didn't make it. So it just really, mm. I feel like with the whole bull incident, I'm going back to the hoedown, um, when Heather was obviously responsible for how it, how it got to the different level, how it sped up and Tamara fell off and that thing, that's mm. on national television. We saw that, we see that Heather's lying yeah. about not being behind it. So we don't, so now there's like no proof for us to go behind uh, about the whole phone call thing. So we don't know if, she actually sure. said it, or if Tamara is making it up, but she mm. never um, she never denied it, though. Right. She never denied saying it. Yeah. So before we get into this Heather's entrance to this discussion, uh, we should probably remind everyone to please log on to iTunes and rate and comment us. Check us out on YouTube as well. And we do love to look and read and respond to your comments. And yes. Anything you want to add? <laughs> yeah, just rate, review us, five stars on iTunes. Yay. Yay, thank you. All right, Heather's on her way. She's got a big smile on her face. Yeah. She's thinking she's going to sit down for some girl talk, yeah. and it's silent, and everyone's looking at her. What do you think? What would go through your mind if you walked into a room like that? Because she's probably innocent walk in her right mind. Back <laughs> in her mind, she is like, you know, oh, I'm, I'm just, I'm the star of the party, you yeah. know? Well, I think it, well, now she's feeling all hot, like all high and dry on herself because she just got done comforting uh, Vicky. She's like, wow, mm. I'm such a great friend. Yeah. Everyone loves me. You know, I'm such a supportive friend. And now she's walking into this room and everyone obviously just stops talking the minute she walks in. That's a sure sign that mm. they've been talking about you for the past hour or however long it was. Right. Again, these women at a party in a close situation talking about people directly behind them, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, those the women were in the other room. Just like every other Real Housewives yeah. of Orange County episode. Right. Said. Right. My so it was awkward that they didn't even say anything. They were just staring at each other from across the way mm -hmm. with no words. And then Lizzie finally chimed in and was just mm -hmm. she said are we gonna talk about this <laughs> they got into it and shannon got into it and, and heather got into it but tamra remained pretty quiet for yeah. the most part in the beginning they kept cutting to shots of her and you could tell she was visibly pissed mm -hmm. but she held her words and i think she's very smart to do that because she didn't allow heather to twist her words or throw throw her down make it make her feel like she was lying or incorrect she just kind of listened, and I think that right. was a really great approach. Did you notice that? Right, I did. I really like Tamara. I think she does a great job of standing her ground. Um, Heather really does make her – Heather really does talk down to her every single time they're together. She's talking to her like she's four years old. Even at the end when Heather mm -hmm. left, we haven't gotten there, it's giving head a little bit, but she was like, you know better. Like, you don't yeah. talk to people your age like that, you know, especially yeah. when you're an adult. Mm -hmm. So it's just – for being for someone who is so demeaning towards you, I thought she did a very great job of standing her ground in a very mature way, as right. opposed to blowing up about it. Right, and Shannon kind of got a little crazy about it. Going, you could back tell and Shannon forth. had been drinking a little bit too many yeah. of those peppermint <laughs> things. I still want one. Yeah, but it had the the quote of the evening, I guess you can say, was words to here are words to live by, Heather Jabro. If you think people are, oh, excuse me, if you think I'm talking down to you, I probably am because you're acting like a moron. <laughs> yeah, I wrote that down too. And she I said that with that. such conviction. Yeah. She was like doing like a, a cold read. Right. She was like, like, I don't know what it was. She was really, really pissed. Right. And it's interesting because you could tell she meant it and that that was just exactly what she was thinking. And she wasn't, it wasn't a joke at all. Because yeah. Vicky a lot of times will say stuff like that, but then she'll be like, <laughs> like giggle about yeah. it or laugh, just kind of brush it off. But she dead stare into the camera and yeah. said, because you are a moron. So I'm like, okay, well, we know. Shannon and Heather, that is never going to be resolved. Forget it. 
Oh, yeah. It's just that tension. There's yeah. the, some sort of rivalry. I don't know. I think there's just too much jealousy and too much competition mm -hmm. with the two of them. I really like Shannon because she basically said, Heather, I heard that you said that to pick a side. Yeah. And that's ridiculous. What the hell are you talking about? And she, she, she's just, Heather... Yeah. To go ahead, sorry. Well, she well she's going off of what they talked about at lunch last week. They right. decided, let's be adults. If you ever have a problem with me, tell me immediately. Let's work it out from the get go. Right. And so Shannon found out this news about Heather telling Tamara to pick a side. So she's going to take this opportunity to say, okay, we've had lunch and we decided to do this, and right. I don't like that you told her that. And Tamara goes, or excuse me, Heather goes right from that conversation, that being directly confronted, and turns it right on Tamara quickly, right. quickly. Yeah. We, I never said to pick a side. Right. And, and I believe Tamara. I believe that she did say that. I think it is a big... Obviously, if this happened six months ago or however long it was, and Tamara is still this obviously upset about it, it had to be a big deal, and I think she knows that Heather was behind it, and that's hurtful for someone who was in your wedding right. and someone that you're that close with. Right. And then Heather's back saying that Shannon is yelling at her again. And Shan Shannon, I haven't seen I've Shannon yell at all. I've never seen Shannon yell. No, yeah. she's, not, she's in her own home on the couch, probably with a cocktail, looking at Heather and think like she's crazy. And it just goes to show none of these women are really friends. Like, would you want somebody in your house that you no. really don't? You're so uncomfortable around that you don't even like to talk to them. Yeah, I, and, and if I was in Heather's p position, I wouldn't even feel comfortable enough to, like, take this opportunity to, even if I didn't do what they're saying, to right. defend myself. That's not the time or the place at this Christmas party that's not even yours. True. You're the guest. True. Do we want to say anything else about Cut Fitness and Good Day LA? No, I mean, I think that that was the whole episode, was yeah. this whole thing between Heather and Tamara and how this thing that had happened six months ago, we didn't even see it. True. So it's just all talk. We don't know actually what happened. So, I mean... Whether or not Heather actually did do this, that's very hurtful to Tamara. If she didn't, then maybe she has, you know, some reasoning behind her actions. But right. we mean, don't really know. Terry came in, and Terry really didn't help Heather's case too much. Mm -mm. Um, well, Heather wouldn't even let Terry talk. No. She was putting all of the words in his mouth, and he was just like, uh, uh, Yeah, because like, I guess Heather didn't reply to any of the text messages that Tamara sent saying she was hurt about not being featured on the show. And then Terry kind of agreed with Tamara, saying, like, yeah, she shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. But he couldn't cop to it. He couldn't say anything. Yeah. Because um, there was a phone call that came in. I mean, this thing, this thing, th my thing with this is this was six months ago. Now Tamara is getting this opportunity to actually be on the show. So let's focus on that. And that's kind of what Terry and Eddie yeah. were saying the whole episode. I would have just said... And I'm not her, but I would have just said that, you know, I mean, I appreciate you giving me this opportunity now because I will be honest with you when when you feature that other fitness studio, like I, I was wondering why why didn't you feature mine? We were just opening and I just feel like I was really slighted in that. Like I, I just don't right. understand, you know, maybe you know something I don't, but I, I just I really was kind of pissed. So I, I, thanks for the opportunity. And yeah, I mean, I'm interested, but right. just so you know, like it really did make me feel Bad. Yeah, that's really <laughs> oh. all that needed to be said. Yeah. And to be honest, that's exactly what Tamara said when in round one, like we were talking about. She said that, but mm. then Heather, you know, hopped on that opportunity to make it this huge thing. Mm -hmm. But I do think that was Tamara's. She wasn't even going to say anything, but Heather kind of like keeps pulling it out of her. Yeah. Heather is, because she keeps talking down to people. She keeps baiting people. I know. You know, that's what it is. Okay, we have to talk about. The phone call. The telephone call. Yeah. Which I thought was fake from the beginning. Heather's trying to get out of this conversation. Well, She's pissed. Right. The thing is, the show never shows their phone calls they get. You know? No. So that's why we know that this one in particular is either fake or it's well, really important. When they do get calls, they're always on speakerphone. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I think that's part of, I think that's part of, like, when you're on the show, you need to, when, when, you, need, when you answer the phone, you need to say, you know, cameras are rolling. We're on the sh you know, we're, we're yeah. here, you know, because the person on the, on the phone, other line of the phone needs to give their consent. And it's, right. you, we've heard kids on the speakerphone before. Mm -hmm. Tamara's just totally taken off because she's pissed, but which was a little melodramatic. 
anyway, but she just left the room, basically. So Heather's left sitting there looking at all these other faces, and Danielle is in another world, and so she has to figure out what she's going to do. She picks up the phone. Honey? <laughs> yeah, and just... conveniently, her son was sick. We don't know. Yeah, we, we don't, don't know. know. But Vicky said that she didn't see any light come on. Yeah, the she screen didn't, didn't light up or anything. And she was like, well, hold on. Let me give the phone to Daddy. And Terry goes, if it's a fake phone call, he did a great job of transitioning mm -hmm. and being like, oh, you are sick. We should go. Well, I was wondering who she was talking to because I kind of had looked down. I saw that she was like going to her purse. I don't know who the hell is she talking to. I mean, it was just like, it was basically like... Hey. Yeah, the phone didn't ring or yeah, anything. Yeah, I mean, there was, was no, this... like, I need to, oh, like, who's calling? Like, you know, there's no focus or, like, sliding a finger across yeah. the screen or, like, oh, it Terry, Terry, our legitimate. son's calling. Like, uh, the sitter, you know? I mean, like, the kid isn't home by himself. Right. Yeah, it was just a grab the phone out of the yeah. purse, put it right up to your ear. It was a fake phone call. It was definitely a fake phone call. And then just the Just an weird, excuse to get out of the conversation. The weirdest evening of the night was when Heather went up to Tamara to say goodbye, and she had this huge, like, Ronald McDonald I've, smile across her face. Yeah, and her eyes were the widest I've ever seen. Weird. Them. She's like, we're going to go. Our son is not <laughs> feeling very well. Um, but I love you, but I don't like you. Yeah. Oh, okay. It was really uncomfortable. It was just, at that point, I feel like you don't even go up to hug this person. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's are we cool or are we very, not? Yeah. Like, I'd be like, okay, this is really phony. I'd be like, I, well... You right. know what, Heather? Do do what you gotta do, but I mean, you know, for the she tonight, like to I'm Tamara, done. Like for tonight, was, I'm done. Right. She was talking to Tamara like she was four years old. She's like, you know better than to do that. She was pointing her finger in her face. And reminded she her she was a like, bridesmaid again. Yeah, reminded her about that she was in her wedding. I would never like, do anything to it. Never lie to you. Yeah, it was just all too, way too much for me to handle. Yeah, I mean, when you get into things like. Would I ever lie to you? When you get into stuff like that, it's kind of like, okay, it's derailed. Now we're away from the topic yeah. at hand. And Terry's in the background saying, oh, Nikki's got a thing. <laughs> he doesn't have a thing. He's probably sound asleep. <laughs> Heather, it isn't nice to say that your kids are ill. Yeah. It isn't a good thing to mm -hmm. say. It's like saying, oh, Bad you know, karma. I'm going home for my grandmother's funeral and, and you know, yeah. be careful. Be careful. I karma. wouldn't do that. <laughs> what was interesting, especially when all those women were confronting, they weren't even confronting Heather, but when Heather was in front of them all uh -huh. for the round two, it was interesting yeah. the divide of people because we saw Vicky and Lizzie on Heather's side. They completely saw where she was coming from. Danielle had no opinion. <laughs> and then um, and then Tamara was there. And who and, and everybody else seemed to be on her side. Well, who was everybody? Shannon, basically. Shannon. Yeah. Which I, I am on Tamara's side with this. I, I do believe that Heather did have something to do with it, with, mm. not, with not putting on Tamara yeah. on Good Daily. I, I, mean, I mean, that's what it boils down to, you know? Exactly. I agree. So, I'm on Tamara's so? side. Yeah. yeah. But also at the same time, now she is giving you this opportunity, so you don't want to ruin your chances right. of doing it. Mm -hmm. See, I thought you were man the opposite because of the gift situation, the way right. it was no, presented. Right. No, I agree. I do agree with that. That's what I'm saying now. Mm -hmm. I think what you were saying earlier about how, oh, thank you so much for this opportunity, but I, w I did want to just mention that I was a little taken aback when you didn't ask mm -hmm. me to do it the first time, but thank you so much for letting me do it now. And I feel like that's all that needed to be said. Right. Then it would have ended. I mean, that was almost a year ago or mm -hmm. six months ago or whatever. So, But it is a gift. You don't, it's, you're not entitled to be on Good Day L LA. It's a privilege to be asked right. to be. So. Mm. Was Heather stupid to leave that party the way she did? Yes. Because now that was she's the got... worst exit I've ever seen. Well, not only that, now she's got like five women who are going to sit there and talk about what her for the whole night. For the rest of the night. Exactly. So now she's removed herself from a situation where she could just sit back and just observe and keep people in check. Right. You know, now it's a free for all. You never leave yeah. a party like that. Well, they didn't even show any more of it. Vicky left right after. Yeah. We don't know how long people stayed. I feel like if something dramatic happened, they would have kept the cameras on and kept people there. Right. So. Right. But I just think it was stupid. I mean, if you know, if you're walking into a room, people are talking about you. When you leave the party, yeah. it's going to be even worse. Exactly. And you definitely don't make some sort of fake exit. Yeah. Because that's just not. I thought that was fake. And when Vicky said, your phone didn't even light up. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, I was like, okay, confirmed. I knew it was fake. I knew yeah. it was. They wouldn't have added that about Vicky if they didn't want us to think it was yeah. a fake phone call. Yeah. What about the acting 
What do you think of the acting of the phone well, call? Well, she's a great actress, you know. Is she really? I don't though? think she is, but she. Because the phone call but, didn't but this fool me. Episode, though, yeah, this episode, though, we hear from Shannon and we hear from Tamara. Uh, they say it numerous times. Well, she's an actress, so I never mm -hmm. know exactly what she actually thinks. So I think that's just another example of that. Right. Well, on that note, let's get into some news and gossip. After Buzz TV News. So is Heather acting? She was recently on Access Hollywood Live where she sat down with Billy and Kit and they talked about the show. And Billy Bush pretty much asked her, um, are you acting? Because we've seen you in a lot of different shows. I mean, what's, what's the degree of, of this? Mm -hmm. And Heather kind of replied back in jest. I was like, well, aren't we all acting? And she basically broke it down that oh. we're seeing pieces of her. The algorithm they use for what they actually shoot and what they actually show, according to Heather, is that they shoot about 30 hours of footage. And after that, that algorithm boils down to about 20 minutes of actually live to air. Right content so we're seeing pieces of her she also claims that she is frustrated in the way she is portrayed on the show i would be too i would be too yeah <laughs> yeah but if that's who you really are then maybe that's something beyond the show she didn't say anything bad about shannon but she did mention that shannon's husband made sexual comments about her when she got up on the bull for the bull riding a few weeks ago and they showed a clip and it's definitely interesting, so you should probably check it out after this. But um, it, it was like not like a, I mean, it was kind of like oh, open your legs or something like that. But apparently, Terry was really upset about it, and he's gonna call out Shannon's husband on an upcoming episode. And Shannon and Heather get into more of it, so um, for that. nothing is gonna be changing there. <laughs> Heather goes on to say um, that she is not a paranoid person, but if she feels someone's talking about her behind her back, they probably are. Mm. So she's got this control thing where she wants everyone to know that she knows what's going on. Yeah, she's got it. She's got it all settled. So yeah. who knows with her? And mm -hmm. then um, Lizzie went on in her Bravo blog and basically talked about how um, she was still upset that Vicky thought she she was not upset that Vicky thought she was Mexican. That was not. It they, they was painted that way on the show. Right. It was. But basically, she was just upset that. Vicky kept pretending she didn't know her. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's the end of that. Like we don't yeah. need this feud between those two is not a feud they at need all. To be friends. Yeah. We saw. Right. I think something's starting to happen with them. We saw this episode a little bit. Right. Um. Right. But in other news, there's been some talk about Tamara possibly having her own spinoff show, like a lot of Housewives have. But Andy Cohen went on the record saying this is not happening in the immediate future. It could happen later. Um. I don't know. Would you like to see Tamara have her own spinoff? No, okay. No, I didn't, I, okay. I didn't even see the OC wedding. But yeah. um, Tamara went to Facebook today and said, like, this is a rumor that some blogger made up. There's no truth to this. Yeah. I was never, ever approached. And she's like, it's a lot of work, she yeah. said, to be able to pr have your own show and carry it on your back. And then she hashtagged Tamara's OC wedding. So yeah. it must have been work for her. Yeah, exactly. Well... I like Tamara. I wouldn't mind her own show, but I think that she just should stay on this one. Right. And so. one other quick thing. Uh, Shannon went on to talk about Heather as usual. Um, but um, that was going back to what I said about, sorry, the, the, um, the, the football game. Mm -hmm. So we yeah. already kind of covered that. So now <laughs> that does it. That's all right. Well, that's all, right. all I have. Are you predicting anything for next mm -hmm. week? For next now. week? You're after Buzz or, TV. Let's see. So I don't know, this, this episode, I feel like the promotion for next week, I was like, wait, 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 hold on. I, so I didn't get much meat like I usually feel like I do. Um, I think we'll see more of Shannon and David's marriage kind of crumbling, unfortunately. Um, I really just want them to be happy and figure it out. But also, she said divorce is not an option. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I mean... I just want the best for the kids and the best for them, right. but obviously we're going to see more into their marriage and more into kind of the pieces of it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what you do with that marriage. You know, where do you go? Yeah. If, if divorce isn't an option, clearly very unhappy, right. what do you do? Uh, it looks like Tamara is going to be on um, Good Day LA. <laughs> yeah, uh, so she's going to do it, and they so can't find Heather. Yeah, and they can't <laughs> find Heather. It should probably be like in the makeup room or something, but I wonder yeah. if Heather will be like, doing like just to try to make Tamara nervous I mean obviously and then Tamara's like oh am I gonna have to do this on my own well aren't there like six other chicks trainers there? yeah who I really hope show? that Heather doesn't try to upstage Tamara in any way on the right. show for the segment but right. I guess we'll see
Right, yes, we shall. Yeah. All right, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Sterling Cates. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Grant Michael R. That'll we'll do it for us. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.